Good morning people and welcome to another video. It's Sunday morning and we're gonna have a very very warm Sydney ride. The forecast for today is 39 degrees so right now it's 6 30 and it's a nice 20 degrees but this ride needs to go up without a hitch. I want to be home before it gets too hot. Now hot weather like this prepared two bottles of water bit of drink mix in one of them and something I'm trying to remind myself to do for the ride now is put on sunscreen something I've been always forget about to do so I've put a big bottle of sunscreen in my bathroom now so I try and remind myself to put that on as I'm getting changed anyway the ride for today it's one that you'd all be familiar with if you've watched my channel we're gonna go to Brooklyn and then bob and head on the way back so nice rolling hills and two uh, bigger climbs all right let's get to the meeting spot Today's topic is gonna to be something a bit more relaxing. It's gonna be how I take my photos on the bike. Now I know everyone loves taking good looking photos of themselves as well as their bike. Some of the photos I see on Strava are pretty cracking as well. But I'm gonna show you what I do to make photos like this. And in fact, I'm gonna show you some photos that I take on this ride. All right, let's go. Prior to cycling, my hobby, my main hobby was actually landscape photography. And this is a hobby I was super passionate about. I just loved every element of it. I loved waking up early. I loved being out in nature. Uh, you know, cycling has a lot of similarities to photography as well. There's a huge part of it, which is about gear acquisition syndrome, which I know everyone loves. It's about buying those cameras, those lenses, putting together a good kit that works cohesively well together. So that was a massive passion that I had. Uh, and I can probably go into it in another video, but it's a hard hobby because you have to go out there and spend hours out there. And sometimes you just don't get results. So uh, I found it quite frustrating and, you know, I've moved more into cycling. Uh, but coming back from my recent trip and taking photos out there, I realize I still really love the hobby of photography, as well as I think a bit of that's been absorbed by videography, which is I do on this channel. That reignited a bit of passion for photography and I thought, why not share with you guys how I take photos on my rides just using my iPhone? Because a lot of people see my Instagram photos and they think that, oh, you must be using a, you know, a proper camera setup, but you can achieve some really, really good photos on your phone uh, without the need of bringing a whole camera setup, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera with you. I'm gonna go through a few tips and a little bit of a tutorial today of what I do to make take my photos on the bike. When you're using a phone, you can't faff around with depth of field and a few other more complicated uh, parts of photography. Uh, but what you can focus on are some really big ticket items. So I'd say the most important things to phone photography is your composition, the lighting, and finally the editing that you do. For composition, if you're taking a photo of your bike, the most important thing is to have a nice square on shot of your bike and the backdrop either needs to be something that's simplistic enough that it doesn't detract away from the bike or of course if you've got a nice view behind your bike that always does well. A good tip here is to have your shoot your bike straight on, make sure that your crank arm is at the 3 o'clock and that uh, the handlebars are straight. Here's a couple of photos here that I've taken of bikes and you can see the key here was to have a nice interesting background with a bit of like contrast uh, but it's not so distracting that the tracks away from the bike when taking photos on the bike while you're moving number one is to do it safely so I only usually take photos with uh, when I'm riding if I'm at the back of the group so I'm not impacting on other people riding around me and here I really like to utilize the wide angle uh, the wide angle lens on my iPhone 
Now the reason for that is because you can capture a lot more of the environment, you get a real sense of like the movement of the bike and I like to include the handlebars as well just to give a bit of perspective on the photo to show that I'm in there as well and I'm riding in the group. For these on the bike photos it always helps if you're in a nice setting so when I do these I try to make sure that you know we have some nice uh, landscape around us, we're out in the national park or there's some nice sunlight or clouds going on but here composition is important. You don't want to get too much of the sky, for example. You want to have a strong focus on the riding group that you're with. So what I usually do is put the wide angle on. I put it around my chest to make sure that I capture my handlebars, but as well as the group in front of me, and then I angle it down slightly so to, to capture the group. Now on the topic of lighting, what you want to aim for is a bit of contrast in the image. If you have too much light, the image is quite flat. And if you have too little light, then your phone will have to compensate by introducing, uh, by increasing the sensitivity to light, which will introduce noise to your, to your image. And also the things that you want to show, like your bike or the people you're riding with, it just won't look good. So what you want is, and this is luckily for us, is the nice morning golden light. When you have the sun coming in from an angle, you get a nice mixture of contrast. Uh, and that is, I reckon, the best looking. All right, finally, I'm going to go through editing. Now this one can be tricky unless you spent some time around editing before. Uh, color signs is a big thing here. So to help you guys out, um, I've actually put some of my presets that I use for my photos. I'm going to put it in a Google Drive link here below uh, and you can use those, but you have to use them with Lightroom. So Lightroom is actually, you, you can download it as a free app. And this is the best tool to edit your photos, I believe, because it lets you control a lot of the settings. And the main settings that we want to control are your lighting effects and then your colors. Color science is something that's been delved into for years. And they're just, the fact of the matter is, there's just things that, that your eye is drawn to and there's things that are just pleasing to look at. So for example, some colors just complement each other very well. For example, like a turquoisey blue always looks really good with like an orange color. And it's no surprise, those are on opposite sides of the color wheel. Now, I'm not gonna go into details about how to import the presets into Lightroom, but what I will put there, uh, down in the description is, a, is an article which describes how you put it into the phone app. And what I'm gonna sh just show you right now is how to use the presets. And it's literally as simple as clicking the preset button here, selecting which one you want, and bam, it's done. Now, I usually do a quick little edit after that because I'm not always quite happy with exactly how the preset looks. The preset is more of a, a generalized edit. So usually what I like to do is just decrease the vibrance and the saturation down a little bit just because I think photos with too much color look a bit unrealistic. And sometimes I'll fiddle as well with the light to increase the contrast or maybe raise the shadows. But that's how I edit my photos and get them looking like that. And I think those, just within those few things there, they only take a few seconds, you can produce some really nice looking photos on the bike. Now, obviously you don't have to edit photos like I have, you could do it with your own way. Some people prefer much more saturated photos. Some people like posting just black and white ones, but I hope you found this tutorial useful and there's some tips in there that you can use while you're on rides. If you take a really nice photo on one of your rides, why don't you tag me in your Strava activity or send it to me on Instagram because I would love to see it. Anyway, if you're in Australia, I hope you enjoy the Friday public holiday and you manage to get out there and get some rides in. And if you're from another part of the world, have a good weekend. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.